Hey YouTube, very quick video for you today. This is on the Push 3 controller. There are just two very quick tips I want to offer to those new to using this controller. Okay, so let's get right into it. The first one is the way you want to organize yourself with your workflow. Using the Push 3, you can actually trigger your scenes the traditional way using the pads and using these tr scene trigger markers here. You have eight of them and you can go down one step at a time using the top denavigating buttons or you can use the octaves to go down eight scenes at a time which is a really good uh, time saver yeah when you first switch on your push the default way for you to trigger scenes using the jog wheel actually just ignore these buttons for now is that when you press the jog wheel, if you can see here, I've got scene number, sorry, I'm pro probably blocking the video, but I've got scene number two highlighted here. The default setup in settings is if I then press the jog wheel, anything or any clip in this scene two would be played, yeah? So I've only got one there. So even though I don't have that track highlighted, the fact I have the scene highlighted means that it's going to trigger that, yeah? So let me go to the settings and we go, if you go to workflow, I've actually got mine set the opposite way. So let's just set that to scene. And if I go back to, if I just come out of settings, that will happen, yeah? It will trigger everything along here. So let me just go back here. There's no sound at the moment. This is just for demonstration purposes. I've got scene three highlighted. I'm gonna press the jog wheel. These two clips should play, yeah? And you can see from the motion in the clips that they are, right? So let me just stop that from playing. Okay. And I'm just gonna press the stop to make sure that none of these tracks are going to play. And I'm gonna to go to the other option, which is the default one that I have, yeah? So I'll go back to settings. And the workflow I want when pressing this jog wheel is for just the individual clip to be launched. I like it that way, yeah? I'll tell you why in a second. So I've got, you can see here, I've got scene one highlighted. It could be any one of these. And if I press the jog wheel now, it's actually going to start recording. There's nothing there. So it's, I've got the track highlighted, so it will start recording into track seven. If I want to actually play this one, I'm just gonna move over and highlight it now when I've got scene one highlighted, now when I press the jog rule, only that clip is going to play. But let's just prove that by going down to another scene that's also got a clip in it. So scene three, I've got a clip in track seven and in track three. So if I press the jog rule now, only this one should play. And this is the workflow that I prefer. Okay, so let me just stop that. And the reason I like that is because you still have the option to play the entire scene at the bottom. Being able to actually trigger up your scenes on the screen is something new that in Push 3 and it's absolutely excellent. It's a brilliant, really good um, workflow option that they implemented. So, I mean, you can come out of this and go into note mode and start playing notes, but still do the scenes here, yeah, which is fantastic. So this is why I like to have my workflow on clip because I can still access the scenes here. Additionally, if I wanted to play that scene, let me just make sure I am in clip workflow. Yes, I am. Like I said, if I press this, it's only gonna play that clip. Yeah, I'm gonna stop it. If I still wanted to play the whole scene using the jog wheel, all I need to do is hold the shift and press the jog wheel and it's going to play the entire scene. There you go. See, so you've got both clips playing now. And of course, that happens in the other way as well. If I go back to scene, yeah, come out of settings. Let's just stop that. And obviously in scene mode, if I press the jog wheel, they're both going to play. But if I wanted just say track number seven clip to play, let's just stop everything. Make sure, hold the stop button, make sure everything has stopped playing. If I just wanted the clip, like I said, in track seven, scene three to play, all I need to do again is hold down shift, press the jog button, jog wheel, I should say, 
and only that clip will play. So it depends on which workflow you have set up in your settings. It doesn't really matter because you can just swap to the other workflow by holding down shift. And another quick thing I want to go over now is just the toggle buttons. So say, let me just press this scene. I know there's no music coming out, but you can see that the clips are playing. Say I wanted to check the levels. Traditionally, you can go into your levels button and you have two screens on this one, by the way, where you can check the volume for all the tracks at the same time, or you can check the pans for all the tracks at the same time, sends, etc. Or you can press it again and only track number seven, I can access the volume, pans, and send one and send two, or send A and send B, just for that track. Same and likewise for any of the tracks I have here, yeah? So you have two screens on there, you just toggle between them. But what I like, if I go back to my scene screen, is that if I just wanted to quickly check the level of, say, track number seven, I can press and hold that down, and I can go, right, let me just, for track seven, highlight that, go to the volume. There you go, for track seven. Or I can say, right, let me do the pan for track seven as well. Do you see what I mean? And then once I let go, I go back to the previous screen I was on, yeah? And what I like about this mixer, volume, mixer page in particular is that it goes back to the last screen that you had highlighted, yeah? So on this one, I've got the pans for all of the tracks highlighted and if I go in there and press it to the other screen where it's just the individual track that I'm I'm adjusting and go back to my my scene screen and hold down you see it takes me back to that screen that I was last on on my mixer page so the same thing goes for say I'm on this track I want to go to devices I can press and hold and maybe I want to adjust something very, very quickly and let go. And it takes me back to the, to the, the um, scene screen. Likewise, if I'm in the device screen and I want to quickly go and adjust and play a different uh, clip or scene, because I've got scene mode highlighted or in my settings, then I can come back and go into my device and, and play around. And you'll find that you can have this toggle option with a lot of the buttons on the push, yeah? Like quantize is another good one. You press and hold it to actually get into the settings. So you have to do that hold option with that to adjust your swing quantize amount. And when you've done your settings, you press it and it actually implements those settings. So very quick video, let's just end it there. I'll do more videos on push and push three as I get more experience with it, but that's just a quick fire tip for you beginners out there on the push three controller. Anyway, thanks for watching.